Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronics Fix. Today we're going to be comparing the hardware on the PS4 Pro versus the PS4 Slim. I've gotten a lot of questions on my YouTube channel about, you know, what's the difference between the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim and what makes the Pro a Pro and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd just take a few minutes to just really look into this and see what the biggest differences are. So the first thing is going to be the weight. Any of you that have picked up both know that the Slim is actually a lot lighter. It comes in right at 4.6 4 pounds versus 7.3 pounds for the Pro. That's a significant difference, but the Pro also packs in a lot more power for that weight. While we're on the subject of power, let's just take a quick look at the motherboards on these. You're gonna notice a huge difference in size on these motherboards. This is obviously the PS4 Pro, this is the PS4 Slim. Now, the main, probably number one difference between the Pro and the Slim and what makes the Pro a Pro is the APU. So the PS4 Pro APU has 4.2 teraflops of computing power versus the PS4 Slim coming in at 1.84 teraflops. Clearly, that's over twice as much computing power it ends up with 30% more CPU power and 100% more GPU power on the PS4 Pro. So that, what I would say, is the number one thing that, that makes the PS4 Pro a Pro console and the number one thing that, that makes it stand out above the PS4 Slim by far. Now let's talk RAM. So the PS4 Pro has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. These are all the RAM chips right here. And the G and the GDDR5 stands for graphics. So that's specifically dedicated to graphics. Now, something else they've done on the PS4 Pro, which is interesting and kind of cool, is they actually have an extra gigabyte of RAM on this motherboard. And that extra gigabyte is for things like if you have Netflix open while you're playing a game or something like that. So that extra gigabyte of RAM does all the small things that need to be done to keep other apps open and stuff like that. So then your graphics chips don't have to be doing that. So a lot of people have asked, okay, so we see the eight gigabytes of RAM, where's the extra one gigabyte? And the interesting thing is they actually have two 512 megabytes. So one is right here and the other one is just on the other side of the board, basically directly across. They're each right there. So that's what they've done, and each one of these RAM chips can be used for different things. So this one can be used for certain things, and this one can be used for certain things. And they mostly left the developers um, decide what they wanna do with those. But that's what that extra RAM chip is for, or the two extra 512 megabytes of RAM is for, just to free up these RAM chips so these can just be used for the graphics. Now on the PS4 Slim, they actually do have the eight gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM as well, but it doesn't have the extra RAM chips to do all the, the other stuff. So that's gonna mean that it's gonna be using the graphics RAM for doing all the little things that the console needs to do. And so that's gonna be using a little bit of the RAM chips for that. So that's gonna just make it maybe a little bit slower, things loading a little bit slower and the game's not playing quite as fast as on the Pro. Another thing I'd like to mention about the APU chips on these motherboards, this APU chip on the PS4 Slim is a little bit smaller. It's 39 millimeters by 39 millimeters versus the PS4 Pro coming in at 42 millimeters by 42 millimeters. And the Pro's APU is obviously just because there is so much more computing power in this APU versus the PS4 Slim. Another huge difference between the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim is that the Pro does support 4K gaming, the PS4 Slim does not. So that's obviously one of the main differences as well, and one of the, one of the reasons that someone may want to get the Pro versus the PS4 Slim. And one other note on the motherboards, the PS4 Pro motherboard has two USB ports in the front, one USB port in the back. That's gonna be great for things like VR gaming, where you have the VR processing unit taking up one of the USB ports. So then you still have the two in the front for charging your move controllers. On the PS4 Slim, you just have the two USB ports in the front and you don't have anything else on the PS4 Slim motherboard. Now, another thing to keep in mind as well, if you love the audio out port, the PS4 Slim does not have that on the motherboard, whereas the PS4 Pro does have the optical audio out. Now let's talk disk drives. 
If you notice, these disc drives are essentially almost exactly the same. So the main difference is on the ribbon cables, you can see they do come out at different places and they are a little, you know, the lengths are a little bit different and that sort of thing. Let me flip them over and you can see this side. So you can see, you know, they're uh, pretty much exactly the same. Now, the main difference in these is I have verified that the lasers do have different part numbers, but other than that, they are essentially exactly the same. So it is possible, maybe you can take the laser out of this and put it in this and put it in this slim, and I would think it would probably work. Now, we haven't done that, so I don't know for sure, but that just goes to show that, that the disc drives look almost interchangeable. There are some things that you would have to change if you wanted to swap them, but they're very, very similar. For the hard drives, on the PS4 Pro, it comes with a one terabyte hard drive. Now this hard drive is 5400 RPMs and it's a SATA 2 hard drive. So the key here is that the PS4 Pro does support SATA 3, but you're gonna have to get a different hard drive to really take advantage of that versus the stock hard drive that's not gonna take advantage of the SATA 3. So some of you may wanna go ahead and put in a, a SSD or something like that to really take advantage of that SATA 3 on the PS4 Pro versus the PS4 Slim that's got, at least ours has the 500 gigabyte. You can upgrade to a one terabyte fairly easily, but it is just the one, the 500 gig and the 5400 as well. So that's gonna be a, a little bit slower hard drive. And the PS4 Slim does not support SATA 3. Another huge difference between the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim is power consumption. So the PS4 Pro obviously has a much bigger APU, much more computing power, so it makes sense that it's gonna need a lot more power. And the max power on the PS4 Pro comes in at about 310 watts. And this is also noticeable because of the size of the power supply for the PS4 Pro versus the tiny power supply on the PS4 Slim. So you can see the differences there. This one's massive compared to this one. But like I said, it does make sense given that the PS4 Pro is so much more powerful. And since it's so much more powerful, not only does it need a larger power supply, but it also needs a very beefy cooling system. So let's take a look at the PS4 Pro cooling system. The first thing we notice with the cooling system on the PS4 Pro is the fan and we'll compare that to the PS4 Slim fan, and you can see the huge difference in the size of the fan for the PS4 Pro. And this is obviously because the PS4 Pro has so much more power, is gonna generate a lot more heat, and so it needs a very large fan to get, that, to get rid of that heat and push the air through that heat sink. So the heat sink on the PS4 Pro Let's take a look at the size of the heat sink versus the PS4 Slim. So here we go on the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim. First of all, on the PS4 Pro, it does have a copper heat sink there, which means that there's gonna be very good thermal transfer between the APU and this heat sink. And then also on the back side, you can see the cooling fins you can see the size of the cooling fins for the PS4 Pro versus the PS4 Slim. And you can see everything with this cooling system on the PS4 Pro is bigger and better than on the PS4 Slim. So that gives you guys a look at the difference between the hardware on the PS4 Pro versus the PS4 Slim. My recommendation is if you're a serious gamer and you play, play games a lot, the PS4 Pro is by far the way to go, no question. If you like to game every once in a while, maybe you know every few weekends or something like that, the PS4 Slim is gonna save you some money. It's lighter, it's smaller, it's gonna fit in your entertainment center better. So, you know, if you're not that into gaming, you just play periodically, the PS4 Slim is totally the way to go. No question in my mind. That's my opinion and my rundown on the hardware differences between the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Slim. Thanks for watching.